Hi everyone, I'm Ben Koppelman, Governance Researcher at the MENA Foundation, um, and it's great that everyone is here today. We're committed to community decision making, so we're really excited by today's call, where Anais will discuss O1's proposal to change MENA's current proof system. But first of all, I just want to set out the agenda for the call. First, I'm going to provide a bit of context. And then that will be followed by Anais, who will then explain O1's proposal. After that, we'll hold a discussion where Anais will respond to any of your questions about the proposal too. We've got an hour scheduled for this call, so we'll finish on time or early um, if necessary or appropriate. Um, this event is being recorded and we, want, we will be sharing the recording more widely with the community after the call. But first, just a bit of housekeeping. Um, we want to run the call in the following way. If you have any questions, then please save them until the Q&A by using the raise hands function at the, at the bottom of your screen on Zoom. Please be respectful when you ask questions and participate in the Q&A. Please don't take more than a couple of minutes and be concise to allow everyone to speak. And if anyone has strong disagreements about what's being proposed and discussed, then perhaps they can ask their questions first. Okay, so just a bit of background. So Anais has authored, along with other colleagues at O1, a MIP, a MENA Improvement Proposal. So this gives us a chance to remind ourselves and the community about our MIP process that's outlined on GitHub. The MIP process is a main mechanism for the community to propose changes to the protocol or new features to MENA for MENA. And the process is open to all, to all community members, and you can view submitted proposals on GitHub. And you can also propose your own ideas by following the process that's also outlined there. At a bird's eye view, these are the key stages of the process. So firstly, a draft phase where the authors um, draft MIPS and submit them on GitHub according to those, um, those guidelines there. And then there's a review, pro a review stage where the authors will seek and incorporate feedback from the community or from specific technical experts through community calls, just like this one, as well as discussions on GitHub Amina research. And so in the next couple of weeks, we're currently in the, for this particular MIP, um, the, for the next uh, couple of weeks um, is that review stage. There's also then last call and finalize, which provides final opportunities for feedback and approval. The MIP process is overseen by a group of MIP editors to ensure that the process is followed correctly. Okay, if this MIP completes the process successfully, then the plan is to hold a community vote on chain next month to decide whether it should be implemented or not. And details about that vote will be published very shortly. However, MIP authors can always retract their proposal and feedback during the review phase could result in a MIP not making it to a community vote. And of course, if there is such feedback would be published um, by, by the MIP editors. So having laid out that background, I'm going to stop sharing and Anais, over to you. Sure, thank you. Um, so let me start sharing my screen. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so thanks everyone for being here. Uh, I'm very glad to be part of this evolving process of the MENA blockchain. So today I'll be representing Owen Labs uh, to show you this uh, MENA improvement proposal, actually the third MIP uh, about a new proof system that we call Kinchi. So I'll first start uh, by giving some, um, some background that I'm sure there's no need for. So what makes the MENA blockchain kind of unique is the ability to recurse. So uh, as opposed to other blockchains uh, that grow 
in size over time. MENA has the ability to keep uh, the verification of the whole uh, blockchain in a single proof. And, and this is a recursive proof. Uh, there's a primitive called PICOS that is able to prove the correctness, not only of the current state of the, of the blockchain, but also the previous step. So all together, that gives you uh, a verification, uh, like uh, an evidence that the whole blockchain was verified correctly from the very beginning. So PICOS alone doesn't do all the magic, um, but instead uh, there's a zero knowledge snark inside. Uh, in this case, if we look at current mainnet uh, of Mina, we will find a Plunk-like uh, snark. Uh, that is the one that we would like to uh, modify. So let's first take a look at the current uh, state of these plunk like uh, snark. So, <clears throat> as I said, uh, the current snark in Mina is plunk based. So, we will be representing a very high level this proof system using this uh, sort of table. So, the current snark uses through witness registers. Those are these three columns uh, that we can see uh, in the left of the slide. Um, and it also uses a circuit size. This corresponds to the number of rows of that very huge table of two to the power of 18. It has a permutation argument that allows us to uh, wire the cells of different rows and different columns together to be able to verify that the same value is, is inside those uh, cells. And altogether, this allows us to uh, have support for some custom gates, such as Poseidon hash, uh, some endoscolar multiplication algorithms, uh, and also some just generic multiplication and addition using just these three, three columns. But at O1 Labs, we thought we could do better. Uh, so we thought, hey, what happens if instead of having just three rows, uh, we could have sort of like a wider say? Uh, so instead of having three witness registers, uh, what happens if we extend this maybe to 15? So this proposal uh, con consists of a proof system that has access to 15 uh, witness uh, cell uh, columns at a time. And instead of having two to the 18 rows, in this case, we shrink that a bit to two to the 16 uh, number of rows. And here instead, uh, we didn't want to be constrained to be able to wire only the three first columns. So in this case, the permutation argument works for the first seven wires. So this allows us for further um, flexibility across uh, rows of the of the circuit. Um, but this is not the only change that we that we make. Uh, we also provide some support for lookup tables and runtime tables for efficiency. So. Basically, uh, this proposal is meant to support more complex gates uh, and also provide some efficiency improvements. We will see more details next. So in this slide, I wanted to uh, put together uh, the advantages and downsides that I could see in this proposal. So first, let's go to advantages. Uh, first, uh, the performance has been boosted. Uh, in particular, the prover um, complexity has been speed up thanks to having the ability of uh, building a more efficient Poseidon hash using these 15 columns instead of just three. And also the fact that we have smaller secrets allows for a faster verification algorithm as well. So as I said, we have support for more custom gates, but not only the quantity, but also the quality. Uh, these custom gates are more complex in nature. Uh, these are range checks. This is meant to verify their number is between a certain interval, which is non-trivial in cryptography. Um, it also um, has some foreign field arithmetic support. This means being able to compute our uh, additions and multiplication in, in different fields than pasta fields, the native fields uh, running inside uh, Kinchi, uh, but also others. Uh, we will see what's the what's this for in a minute. Uh, we also are able to uh, represent some Boolean operations, uh, which are definitely not snark friendly. Also, thanks to the lookup tables that we introduce and some and, and bit rotations as well. So, if we use all these custom gates together with the old gates, uh, we are able to implement uh, some um, cryptographic primitives that are quite complex because they are not um, 
snark friendly as us Poseidon. So we will be able to build ECDSA on the SEC P256K1 curve. This is an example of a foreign field, uh, but also uh, hash functions such as SHA2, SHA3, and in particular, Ethereum's Keytag. And after all uh, that being said, uh, I guess the main um, well, contribution is uh, to support CK apps on MENA. I guess this is an important point that we uh, like to see in MENA. And, and this is because we have extended the functionality on Snarky to build these CK apps to support more complex type of operations. But this comes at the price. Uh, so I wanted to point out some downsides of this uh, proposal. So first of all, the ability to having access to more columns to these 15 columns uh, requires some increase on the on the on the proof length. So this is about one kilobyte more. This is not a lot. This is something to to take into account. Um, also, the fact that the circuit size is has been reduced. If one uh, developer wants to represent a very large circuit, they might have to uh, take advantage of the recursion steps in order to uh, verify like a more complex uh, circuit relation. Uh, but more importantly, uh, this proposal is backwards incompatible. This means that old MENA proofs cannot be proven in Kimchi and mm, newer Kimchi proofs cannot be proven in the old uh, MENA mm, blockchain. So what this means is that this proposal would require a hard fork in the net. So just as, to summarize, uh, this mm, third MIP is meant to substitute the current uh, SNARK running inside Pickles and inside Mina to Kimchi, which is also Plunk based, but better. So if you want to take a further look at the specs or the code itself, here's a link to the GitHub, uh, but I'm sure you can find it uh, in Twitter as well. And also the thing goes for the actual uh, proposal, the document. Uh, and I wouldn't like to, to say goodbye without uh, firstly, uh, thank all my crypto team at Owen Labs, uh, Isaac, Matthew, David, Joseph, Aritia, Vanishri, and Vitaly. Some of them are also in this call, so I guess we all be happy to answer your questions. So thanks for being here, and yeah, let's make this process happen. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks so much for that for that overview. Um, okay, let's move to to Q and A. If people have got questions they want to ask, I see Ivan has a question in the Q and A box. There, he's asking. Uh, I wonder what the proof size is going to be. I guess that's not really a question, but it's kind of questions in it. So. So, as I said, uh, the proof length would be increased, uh, but it's not a lot. Um, so in order to, in order to uh, provide support for the recursive steps, uh, you have to take into account a series of, 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 of Kimchi proofs that get wrapped in, in a, in a pickles proof. So having all of these um, modifications, uh, I think the current, um, the current length is five kilobytes, if I remember correctly. So this would add one more on top of that. So I guess that will have a further increase in, in the overall Pico's proof, but it's not a lot. Yeah, thanks for the answer. Um, so there's a second question. Mm. Um, so they're asking about the performance. I, I guess he's referring to the prover performance. Mm, so the hardware shouldn't be, I mean, I don't think the hardware should change because especially though for the for the transactions and, and the actual blockchain uh, circuits, the fact that we are able to have a more efficient uh, Poseidon hash makes uh, the prover performance and the prover complexity uh, just uh, faster. So I don't see a reason to change the hardware. I mean, the fact that we're able to compute more complex uh, operations does not have a direct impact on the on, on the prover uh, side. 
So unless you're a CK app developer and you really want to, to take the circuit to the limit, uh, in that case, the prover will have to pay a certain amount. But if you are just interested in running the nodes and, and, and verifying the transactions, uh, you, you should actually see a, a, an improvement. Mm -mm. Um, okay, there's another question by another Embry, okay. Um, I, I might be so, able to answer that one actually. Um, okay, yeah, Emory, sure. we, we don't have any um, dates that we can put out on the hard fork timing, um, but that's something that we will post to everyone um, as, as we have a firm date. Um, and that'll be posted in all the different channels we have. Um, so please keep your eyes out on that. But um, of course, we, we have to go through the MIP process before that happens, but um, that might give you a bit of an idea. I saw there was also a, um, something in the chat here um, from Caleb. Thanks, Caleb. Um, this one's also for you, um, and I, uh, it says, if you don't mind dumbing it down for me, can you summarize what benefit this is going to bring to users, for example, like faster or more efficient? And that, that would, that's a really great yeah. question, Caleb, because a lot of um, people who will watch this, especially later on in the recording, would probably like to know those effects as well. Yes, the, that makes a lot of sense. The, at this point, I guess one needs to differentiate between like the type of user that you're referring to. There are many type of users and stakeholders in the MENA blockchain. So if you're referring to the user, like a node producer, uh, they should be made faster. Uh, all of the like the verification of the actual circuit should be faster. If you're referring to the user of a CK app, or like, or actually, if you're referring to just a user that is verifying the 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 proof, um, having less having less uh, having less rows, uh, the circuit size being uh, four times smaller. Uh, is also faster for for the verifier. So if that you're referring to that type of user, you should also see uh, an improvement. Um, and if you're referring to to the user of a CK app, uh, like the actual user of a CK app, um, I guess here the important part is the the augmented functionality, the ability to build more meaningful CK apps. So in that sense, I guess the user would be benefited as well. And if you're referring to the user that is creating the actual CK app, I guess you're all, you are also mm, providing the developer more tools to, to build meaningful um, applications. So yeah, I guess those are the types of users you, you might be referring to. Yeah, thanks guys. So I posted a few links um, that you might have seen before, but this should give some context and background that you can follow up on. And as you can imagine, um, for, for myself or, or Caleb possibly too, I'm, this is pretty complex in that, but um, does that answer your question, Caleb? All right, great, thanks. Um, one thing we can do too, um, since we have a bit of time, um, it is possible if, if someone wants to ask a question um, just through the chat or verbally, um, just raise your hand. There's the button down the bottom of the screen and um, uh, Lindsay will be able to let you speak out loud. So, And I do see there's another question in chat from Emre. Thanks, Emre. And it says, uh, for users and nodes, improving time is shorter because of improvements considering the general users. This is a three to four minute block time average is also very slow. With this fork, is it possible some time cut for the average block times too? Uh, I, I'm right, this is a question, like a second question for you. You mean the time that it takes for a new block to be added to the blockchain? So maybe know. you're referring the to the three minutes slot time. Yeah, that's that's my question to him. I mean, may, I I would assume that's what he's referring to. So yeah, okay. 
the the proof creation should be shorter, like it should be faster. So I guess after overall you could see an improvement there, but verifying the the, the block is not the only uh, the only step of the algorithm that takes place. But there's some network going on, there's some uh, consensus going on. So all these steps also take uh, some amount of time. So I don't know what's the um, real impact of um, in, in, in the in the speed of the block uh, addition to the blockchain but maybe someone from the protocol team could answer more accurately to this question yes i'm not sure if someone else will pop up um uh, is your hand up joseph yeah, um, I could say okay. a few things about this. So, um, yeah, um, for your transaction, like normal transactions and your blocks, this will be faster. And there's a lot of other things we can do both in um, Kimchi to make it faster and, and optimizations that have been done uh, and also things in protocol. So there are a lot of things we can do to make it faster. But at the same time, we have like, also, the effect of adding the ability to do more things with Mina now it becomes zero knowledge smart contract platform. So there could be increased load, and uh, block producers are going to have to process more transactions, doing all this new cool stuff. Um, so in that case, things they may have more work to do, which could counteract these performance improvements. Um, so we're, we're you know although we're speeding this up and we are having releasing all this new functionality. I think this is something that's going to play out that we're going to be trying to make things faster and, and taking steps in that direction. But our first goal was to release the functionality to unlock all these new amazing use cases. Thanks, Joseph. Um, Emre. Um, Lindsay, I saw that Emery had his hand up. Is it possible to unmute him? Yeah, I think I just got to unmute it. Oh, great. Go ahead, Emery. Yeah. Considering like statements four years ago, I remember proving time is one of the bottlenecks of the block time. Like we couldn't get shorter block times because of the proving time. In that sense, is that an improvement? That's why. I that's what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, so uh, definitely there is an improvement. So you have to think that um, the prover uh, needs to ver needs to generate a proof for a very complex operation, and in in the normal plunk or or like mainnet plunk where you only have access to like three numbers at a time, sort of thing. Um, verifying those number of like those amount of, uh, of of complex operations is not trivial. So basically, the prover needs to perform a lot of extra work in order to basically read from memory. Even even the simplest uh, operation cannot be done because you're not giving the the prover enough access to registers. Whereas when you when you increase um, like the you know, the scope of the prover, when you allow the prover to access more uh, variables at a time, you're also providing the prover uh, the ability to prove more complex uh, claims with much shorter time. So I understand that there's a bottleneck if you only have three wires of Plunk as in the current state of Mina, but in enlarging that number uh, really uh, benefits uh, the whole proof system. Mm, I'd like to say that having 15 wires is not a crazy idea. Like in the space, you can see proof systems that have access to even hundreds of, of, of columns. So increasing it to 15 is, is not that, mm, that, that, that mm, weird sort of saying. Uh, but actually, it's a very like it's a frequently used resource to 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 improve the performance of the prover. So so yeah, so like answering your question quite shortly, uh, having this ability to have more columns really has an impact on the prover because you're able to design gates that behave more efficiently for that prover. 
Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And I see um, Imre Enopi also has a question in the chat box here. And he says, assuming minimum requirement hardware specs will be the same for Snark and block producer nodes, um, is that correct? And are there any changed C CPU requirements? For example, more uh, more cores, et cetera. <laughs> uh, I guess more, uh, more recent processors. So, I mean, of course, if you have more recent uh, processors, uh, your proof will be generated faster, but it's not a requirement. So it's up to you. If, like, if you want to improve your hardware for whatever reason, of course, you will see an improvement. Um, but this is not directly related to the actual MIP. So it's unrelated. You can still run with the same hardware as before. Great, thank you. But that's a, that's really good to know. And thanks for the question, Emre. That was uh, pretty useful. Um, I see another uh, question in the chat from uh, Ivan. Uh, does the above repo have everything that's necessary and sufficient to generate and verify the new mean of proofs? If not, what's missing and what's going to be added? And is it going to be added? Yes. Okay, this is a very good question and actually quite easy. So yeah, luckily <laughs> this proof system contains everything that you need to both generate the proofs and also verify them. Uh, so this is this is a repository that Owen Labs is constantly working on. So we keep adding features over and over time. Uh, but right now we are just focusing on on the kimchi then that, that, that has these new custom gates. Uh, so further further improvements uh, over these uh, on these proof system could also take place, but then that would require maybe yet another MIP to, to include those improvements. But right now the the current state of that is is self sufficient. So so yes, it has anything everything that it needs. So there's no need to add anything else. Like it it works by itself already. Um, that's another question by Carol. Mm. Let's read it out so everyone can hear. Um, so I'm reading Carol's question. Uh, are there specific structs of the foreign fields and additional curves in Kimchi? Can we port our own ones? How will the computation cost be managed? Um, so if I understand your question correctly, I think Carol is asking if we can handle any foreign field, uh, any of them. So actually for the current uh, implementation of the foreign field addition and multiplication, we have some bounds on the length of the foreign field that you can use. So it's more or less, um, 259 bits and a half. So any foreign field uh, with prime number be, uh, smaller than that amount uh, will 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 work uh, just uh, transparently in 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 that uh, custom gate. So just to give you some reference, the one we are using for the TechP 256K one has of course 256 uh, bits, so it fits with uh, within those uh, bounds. So uh, we would have to increase the size of the foreign field by more than eight times if, if you wanted to to need another modification and that's not um that's that's very unlikely to happen because normally the type of foreign fields that we are interested in are the foreign fields that other blocks and like other blockchains are using and and they're normally uh way below that threshold so uh, in practice yes you could use any other foreign field so you could use that gate with just your your own configuration. Uh, you can it, it's pretty flexible in that sense. Um, I guess Ivan is asking when is it going to be ready to migrate to it. I mean, I guess that depends on whether the proposal gets accepted, and and when the fork is happening. But so maybe someone from Mina Foundation can answer more accurately to that. Uh, yeah. So for everyone catching up. Um... We'll we'll announce the hard fork and um, we'll put it out in all our channels before so everyone finds out about the same time. And yeah, so please keep following along. Um, we'll see when we put it up. Um, and I did the okay. um, the second part of Carol's question. I'm sorry, I wasn't yes sure if you've answered that. Yeah, part as well. uh, not sure because I've just read so. Um... 
if I put something more expensive than other proofs, then I might be occupying more of the block space and time. I'm not sure I understand that. So um, even even if you have uh, foreign fields uh, somewhere and those and those elements uh, take more space than the actual native uh, representation of of fields that you have inside Kimchi. We we have a, uh, a like a code workaround like we can uh, work with that evenly uh, so we we don't have overflows if that's what you're asking uh, there's no problem with representing larger numbers or something like that but I'm not sure if that's the question um, oh and Joseph he was also clarifying then apart from the repository then we were referring to there's another repo in, actually inside Mina which is the pickles code and that's also required to yeah to basically have the whole snark uh, answering the the question from yeah uh, answering Ivan's question yes you you have any everything you need if you consider the code inside the MINA repo and the code inside that proof systems repo, you, you have everything. So then Ivan is asking which one exactly. So Joseph is really re referring to the actual MINA repo in, inside the MINA protocol uh, user. Yes, in OCaml, that part is written in OCaml. Yeah. It's, it's kimchi. Kimchi is the part that is written in full in Rust. So this is this is not the fact that it is written in OCaml uh, pickles is 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 um, independent of the MIP. So that happened before, and we have to deal with that. So if at some point uh, pickles gets reimplemented or whatever, maybe that will require yet another MIP. Um, so hopefully that solves your question, Ivan. Ivan, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Apologies. <laughs> I've been having that trouble too. Just Great, thank you. Again, for those uh, who have joined late, if, if you do have a question, you'd like to speak it out, just please use the raise your hand function down at the bottom of your screen there, and uh, you'll you'll be able to ask out loud after you gain permission. Does anyone have any more questions they'd like to ask? I have to say, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, so I really appreciate the time you've taken to um, present this and, and let everyone know what's going on. And thanks so much everyone for all the questions. Um, it, it's really important and uh, it's great that you all showed up today and uh, taking such an interest in all of this. Um, actually, we got uh, like a last question. If there has been any third party security analysis of implementation, and I'm not sure about the like the history uh, because I have not been part of Owen Labs from the very beginning. So I don't know how many of them have happened. Um, I think at some point uh, there was an there was a um an audit uh, by by a third party company but i'm not sure when exactly that happened so maybe someone with more experience can can tell you exactly when so yeah sorry to be inaccurate is anyone else on the call that's able to answer well i would say that the code is right there so it's really open to anyone to take a look at it we are using pretty standard um, libraries, uh, but yeah, maybe he's asking for like an actual company, uh, like yeah. an auditing company. So, so Joseph has his hand up. Oh, maybe. Yes. Yeah. So there was an audit uh, a while back, but there obviously have been changes since. And uh, I believe the MF is also 
conducting or arranging audits at the moment that would be, need to be confirmed? Um, I yeah. guess so. Uh, apart from the security audits, I guess uh, one important part of this MIP and, and this new proof system is uh, having added new gates that add more functionality. So I guess uh, a, a good point about this proposal is that those gates have been thoroughly analyzed uh, security wise. And what I mean is that we have proofs of security and proofs of soundness of those constraints. So in case that gives you some um, confidence, at least theoretically wise, uh, yeah, we, we have conducted a uh, thorough research uh, for them. Great. Thanks, Anna. And um, if anyone has any further questions or would like to follow up, um, if, if you don't get the answer that you're looking for, um, please follow up in Discord. Um, probably in the MENA research channel would be a great place. And um, some of our team there will be able to get you in touch with the people that are able to answer. So yeah, please keep the questions coming um, after the call is finished as well. Um, we're happy to answer and move this process along um, any way we can. So one of the roles in the in this process for the MENA Foundation is to basically facilitate between um, between everybody. And so we're very happy to keep an eye out for these kind of questions and 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 find people who can answer them for you. And again, uh, the media research channel in Discord is probably the best place to do that. But you're also you you can ask anywhere in there, and we'll do our best to um, to find these questions and get answers, or put you in contact with people who are able to answer. We do still have a little bit of time. If there are any more questions, feel feel free to put up your hand or we'll post them in the chat or the QA box. So since it's, it's pretty quiet, um, we'll give a last call for questions and then uh, turn it over to you, Ben. Yeah, sure thing. I mean, if there are no other <clears throat> further questions, then maybe we should bring this to, to a close. Um, thanks to everyone coming along to the call. Thank you, Anais, for presenting um, and for others chipping in. That's great. Thanks um and um and you too john for facilitating there too so yeah thank you everyone and um it was a pleasure thank you yeah i'd like to say a big thanks everyone too for coming in and asking such great questions and um also anais and joseph i really appreciate that um that was a really great presentation um and before we we I see a question. Um, ZK Bridge. Um, I don't think that's the um, topic of the call here. Um, but that again, this, there's there's gonna be a lot of questions and, and things we'd like to discuss, but um please uh, ask them in Discord would probably be the first place. Um and we will be having other calls that um come up for further MIPs. Um I was wondering, do you want to mention anything about that, Ben? um yeah just to say we have another community call um coming up um um on the 4th of april on the 4th of april um for another mip authored um uh, by colleagues at uh, uh, o1 labs um on um zk apps so um that mip is um available for for comment it's it's published on on GitHub and on on that information on MENA research. So, um, um, yeah, it'd be great to see everyone again um, um, next week on that call. Yeah, that'd be great.
All right. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for coming today. And uh, hope to see you on the next call and certainly in Discord as well. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.